Hello, my name is Roya. What's your full name? Hello, my full name is Shreya Singh. Okay, Shreya, what can I call you? You can call me Shreya. Where are you from? I am from Kathmandu, Nepal. Can I see your identification, please? Yes, sure. It is right here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, in this first part of the speaking test, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about your hometown. What kind of place is your hometown? The name of my hometown is Kathmandu, which is also the capital of my country, Nepal. It is a beautiful place with many natural reserves and temples. It is also called the city of temples because it has so many temples. There are seven uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites just in one city, so it's quite remarkable. Mm -hmm. What do young people do for entertainment in your hometown? Young people during the night go to clubs or bars to celebrate something and in, during the day they prefer going to the restaurants or cafes or just sitting outside in squares and meeting their friends. Mm -hmm. What's the worst thing about living in your hometown? The worst thing is unfortunately the pollution. My country has been ranked quite high in terms of pollution in the last few years. Okay, now I would like to move on and ask you some questions about tourism in your country. What should a visitor see and do in your country? My country is quite touristy. So if a visitor comes to my country, they get off in the international airport, which is located in the capital. And from there, you have choices to go all over the, all over the country. So you can go to Pokhara, which is the main touristy spot, and from there one can go for many hiking and trekking destinations. Are there any traditional art or music that you would recommend? There are many. My country is full of ethnic diversity, therefore there are people who belong to different ethnicity and caste groups. In particular, there are Gurung people, who have this dance called Koda, and I, I love that dance, so I would like to recommend that one. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the kind of visitor who come to your country. Um, the international tourists or visitors that come to my country are basically from the neighboring countries like India, China, Bangladesh, Bhutan, and there are also people who come from the West, such as the US or Germany or Europe in general, and they come to Nepal for the trekking seasons. They like to go to Mount Everest, or they would just go to the base camps of other mountains as well. Now, I'm going to give you a topic, and I would like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. But before you start talking, you will have one minute to prepare your answer. So here is paper and also a pencil to make notes. Okay, so time's up. Now you have two minutes to talk. Please start. Okay, today I'll be talking about my scooter, which is one of my most prized possessions. Um, because scooter is something that takes me to places and I don't have to rely on other people like my parents or the public buses. So it makes good use of my time and I can reach places faster. It also has a storage container underneath the seat, which makes it easier to store some, uh, things like my jacket or things I have just shopped. That is why I love taking my scooter to everywhere I go. During my university days, I had to take architectural models to and fro from my house. And having a scooter really helped me because I could just store my models into the seat beneath and then go to my university and that was very convenient for me. Also the fact that I can always have someone on the back of the scooter with me was also 
quite entertaining because I would have my friends and my families and I would take them to places like uh, some mountainous resort or just to a cafe and uh, it brought togetherness because I could talk to them while I was driving to that place. So uh, having a scooter really helped me with managing my time as well. So is it valuable in terms of money? Yeah, it is quite valuable because if you want to buy a new scooter, it would take you around 2,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. And would it be easy to replace? Um, it is quite easy to replace if it is an old version. For example, I had an old scooter and I sold it to get my new one. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, something that is important to you and now I would ask you some questions related to it. Let's consider values and the way they change. What kinds of possessions give status to people in your country? In my country, one of the major things that is materialistic and shows great value to other people are houses. So if you own a house, and if it has many stories, people are automatically drawn to say that you have a better status. And the other thing is having a car or having much gold. Mm -hmm. Has it always been the same or were different possessions thought of as valuable in the past? I think it has been the same throughout the years because if you own a house, you can transfer it to your younger generation. So the house that my parents have right now will be transferred to me and that will be transferred to my generation, upcoming generations. So it's basically like a transferable asset which is considered most valuable. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people need to show their status in society? I think it's just to make themselves feel better about themselves among all the people and just say like, I am better than you and not having to do anything with the kind of person they are, but just a materialistic value that they can add to themselves in terms of money or status or just showing off things. Now, let's discuss the role of advertising. Do you think advertising influences what people buy? Yes, I do think that advertisements influence people and what they buy. Because in the modern world that we live in, advertisements are no longer confined with the hoarding boards or things that we see on the streets. But in our smartphones as well, or when, while we, were, we are surfing the internet. Because every time you play a game, or you are watching something on YouTube, or just browsing, you see so many advertisements just pop up. And sometimes you just click on them and you buy things. So it's like the new... A modernized version of advertisement that has been influencing people more than the traditional ones. Mm -hmm. Do advertisements give correct information or do they encourage people to buy things that they may not need? Yeah, it's basically both ways. So you have to be very concise about what you are looking at and what you're looking for in an advertisement. For example, while you are going, you are playing a game and suddenly it shows that you might need to buy a new game or need to buy gems for the game. It's not exactly necessary, but if you feel like you need to buy it, you might do it. And most of the times it's not even necessary to do those things. It's just like a way of making money for the advertisers. Mm -hmm. Is advertising really necessary in modern society? Yeah, if you think uh, in the perception of a company owner, advertisement is very, very necessary because every time you go in Instagram, people are advertising their products or advertising themselves as influencers. And that is why they are earning money and making a living for themselves. So in this world and age, I think that advertisements are really important if you need a growth for yourself. Thank you so much. That is the end of the speaking test. Thank you.